Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Let's Dev, where today we continue working on our clone about vegetation versus the undead. Now, last time we slowly started updating our game's code to work with a new grid based system. This was done by implementing environmental based features such as placement restrictions and the inclusion of fog, and also to improve the overall quality of the code in general. It was a solid step forward with many features now being tied to grids and tiles instead of individual collisions and the like. So today we continue those conversion efforts to further improve the game's code. Today we'll be focusing on specific restrictions and any exceptions that have to be made for said restrictions. We'll do this through some new scripts, more added code, and a whole lot of hope that nothing breaks along the way. But if something does break, we'll assess the state of the break and the overall project to see what can be done about it in the future. Sounds ominous enough, so let's get to the coding. First up was moving the placement restriction checks to its own script. In this new script, the code would use the mouse's X and Y coordinates to determine which cell to check. It would then return the output as to whether or not the plant can be placed in that specific cell. This would simply be a transition from the object to a script, so luckily nothing broke while testing. So back to the script, instead of using a list of conditionals, I converted the code to a switch. Then, for some reason, I made a check for an existing plant in the conditional for lily pads. The code indeed would work regardless, but clearly there were some issues. First, plants could be stacked on the lily pads, which is clearly not meant to be a thing. Second, if a lily pad was eaten, the plants placed on top of it remained, which again, shouldn't happen. So there was clearly a lot of work left to do. Back in the code, I created a new script to refresh our board grid. It loops through the entire grid, and if a cell is marked as unplaceable, yet a plant exists in that cell, the plant would be destroyed. This at least appeared to have worked since the zombie didn't seem affected by the hypno shroom, so I moved on. Back in the check script, I took that weird plant check and moved it outside the lily pad conditional. Then I tried tracking any objects existing in a cell via their position. If the plant was a lily pad, then something could be placed, and if not, then the space was obviously occupied. This did not work. So, thinking perhaps it was due to some sprite offsets, I added some math to the checks and nothing changed. Plants could still be stacked regardless. So in order to do some debugging, I had the state of the check script drawn to the mouse. It seemed like the plants just weren't getting picked up, despite the math being correct. So instance place was replaced with instance position, which finally returned an actual object ID. However, applying the same check to the script yielded no changes. And befuddled, I decided to just take a break and focus on the second issue. Applying the same logic of position determining grid cell, a check was added to the plant step code. If the cell the plant currently occupies is marked as unplaceable, then the plant would destroy itself. And yet despite no difference in these checks whatsoever, an error would pop up claiming that the nested arrays aren't arrays. Meaning that somehow, someway, the position data for plants exists in some anti-math dimension or something. Which is where I decided to throw up the white flag for the day. The reality here is that because I've been working on this project for so long, its existence is sort of a relic of its time, and trying to update it with current knowledge is becoming increasingly difficult. The existing code isn't bad or wrong per se, but it just doesn't fit with the way that I do things nowadays. And on top of that, the fact that I have to go through so many hoops to access arrays within a grid is just so exhausting and unnecessary. It's precisely why I'm eagerly anticipating GameMaker's 2.3 update. Which actually brings me to the future of this project. I will unfortunately not be returning to this project until GameMaker's 2.3 update drops. Not only because the updated coding and features will greatly help us, but because it's going to change the way that we approach this project regardless. However, I promise, once the update finally leaves beta and is fully released, not only will we return, but we will basically be doing the whole thing over from scratch with an actual grid system in mind from the start. At this point, it's kind of necessary for both my sanity and general enjoyment of working on the project. So hopefully that GameMaker update comes soon. Who knows, perhaps it's already been released by the time this video goes out. But until then, that'll do it for this iteration of our Plants vs Zombies clone project and this episode of Let's Delve. So leave a like if you enjoyed the episode, subscribe and turn on notifications if you haven't already, and be sure to leave your thoughts on this iteration in the comments. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.